Today in class, we're going to be learning about limits and asymptotes. They tend to be very useful when you're trying to figure out when, how a function behaves as it tends to weird values, for example, like infinity or 5. Uh, mass and physics has a lot of these black hole scenarios where, um, for example, when you divide something by 0. Um, if we take the example of 1 over infinity, Um, a lot of people tend to say that this is equal to zero, but that's just not true. I mean, how would you, where did the one go? If you're dividing something by a very large number, it's the one has to go somewhere. So mathematicians tend to just say that this is undefined. Uh, let's not get into the really, but it's just, we don't really know, we can't really say, can't really give it a value. But the issue now arises then, what happens? At least what can we not, at least do something with this one over infinity? So, what I'm going to do is going to plot a table of how, how it behaves. So if we treat this as 1 over x, then we have x and 1 over x. I'm going to show you sort of how this 1 over x behaves as we go towards infinity, as we get, as x becomes very, very large. So if we start with 1, then go up in tens, go do 1,000, 100, a million, Um, 1 over x in this case, so in this one would be 1, divided by 10, so that would be 0 0.1, here would be 0 0.01, and here 0 0.001, a million will have, uh, that has 1, be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 0 0.00001. So we can see here quite clearly that as x increases, 1 over x tends to 0, but it never actually reaches 0. It gets very, very, very close, but never reaches it. It's kind of like a cap or, or on, on the number. It never, it'll never reach 0, it'll never pass it, just get very close to it. A mathematical way of saying this, or sort of like representing this, is saying that the limit as x tends to infinity of 1 over x will equal to 0. So we're saying that this, as x tends to infinity, um, you'll get very, very close to 0, but you'll never quite reach it. So if we make it as a definition, we're going to say that our limit as x tends to positive or negative infinity, because obviously it doesn't matter whether we're going up in numbers or we're going very, very low in numbers, going into the negatives, of uh, 1 over x is equal to 0. Now I'll just keep these the definitions and I'll keep these aside and bring them up when I need them. Uh, let's take, let's try to find out the limit of x trending towards 5 and infinity of 5x over x minus 5 all squared, and we're going to find, so in this case we're going to find as x tends to 5 and as x tends to infinity. Uh, so what we're going to do now is going to try and make a graph, make a table of all different results, kind of get an idea of what, what the graph and function looks like, and from that figure out the limits. So, um, if we draw a table of x and f of x, See here, if we were to draw this on a graph, of f of x and x, as we go up, we'll have this kind of spike up here that goes up and then comes back down. We know that as when x does become 5, that this, this bottom fraction here will be equal to 0 because 5 minus 5 will make 0, and so our denominator will be 0. Therefore, we know that it's going, f of x will then tend to infinity. So if we look something like this, where this value here is 5. And 
And so now let's. So now we found out that our as x tends to five. Get that down. As x tends to five, our f of x tends to infinity. Now in limits, generally on the other side, we tend to write a, no, a number or a function. It's not really useful if you say that this is equal to infinity because infinity is undefined. So uh, generally, when we say in this case, we tend to say when our our function tends to infinity, we tend to just say that the limit is undefined as well. Um, so now let's take the example of x to infinity. That was an example of x to five. Let's take x to infinity. Um, so as we go up, let's make another table. This time we're going to do 10, maybe 10,000, and then 1,000, and 100. And in this case, we're going to say it's to the 0 point, uh, so it's 2. This is going to be like 0 0.5, and it would have 0 0.04 and 0 0.001. Uh, so we see that this, the trend for as x tends to infinity is that f of x tends to decrease. So if we show it here on the graph, x will do, f of x will do something like this. You get very, very close, but never quite reaches it. This is all great. So we could leave it at that and we'll say that as x tends to infinity, or f of x tends to zero. But there's a bit of a problem with that. You know, what happens if We've tested for all these different values, but what happens if there's at 999.735521, there was a sudden spike, and it made these all these results kind of like meaningless, because then you have a spike here, and it wouldn't really be a limit, it wouldn't be tending to zero. And theoretically, we could test for every single number possible. But the issue is it just takes too much time. And although in this case, we're not, probably not going to have a spike. It's, it's too simple to have a spike. I mean, we know roughly how this behaves. But the issue that we have here is that for, for more complicated examples, you may have a spike, and you may not even know that you'll have a spike. So we really need a better way of solving this out. So we've got to solve it for real and not just use a table. And so I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks that you can then use for other functions that will help you solve these. And we're going to use that same kind of notation that we're using here. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to say that as x tends to infinity, x minus 5, this bit here, is approximately equal to x. And I'm going to prove to you that this is true. Um, obviously you can kind of know that as x gets bigger, and x, and then we're showing you a table. So if we draw a table x minus 5, x and percentage similarity uh, up here we'll have 10 and 100 thousand and then here we'll have 5 995 995 uh, percentage similarity uh, will be 50% Next one will be 90, 95%. Next one will be 99.5%. We see that as x tends to infinity, the results basically become very, very similar. They get very, very, you could say that this value tends to 100%, this value, that these two values become the same. In this case, it's very, very simple. We know that we can look at this and we can say, oh yes, x minus 5 and x are basically the same thing if we had extremely large numbers because you could say the value is a thousand and then when you when you put it into this it becomes 995 they're very very similar and we're going to approximate them as being the same so uh, if we take that approximation and put it into here and i should also mention that it doesn't matter what the number is 5 10 it, as long as it's a real constant number we never really have to worry about it. It's infinity is so large that it will catch up to it. If, you know, if it's a million, the biggest number you can think of off the top of your head, infinity will catch up to it and make it insignificant, as long as it's only like plusing or minusing. Um, 
so if we put that in, we get 5x over x squared, because this gets replaced by x. And this, of course, this cancels out with this, so we get 5 over x. Now, this is quite similar to the thing I just brought up before. The whole limit of 1 over x is equal to 0. If we, um, if we draw this out, we can say that this is 5 times by the limit of x to infinity of 1 over x. Or we can just say that it's the same as saying 5 times by 1 over x. And we know that 1 over x, as x goes to infinity, all equals 0, so this is just the same as saying 5 times by 0, which of course is just 0. So we can say that our, lim our limit of x tending to infinity for this function is equal to 0. It means that it's going very, very close uh, to 0, but never actually touches it. Let's move through one more example and go through another, another special kind of trick. Um, which you can probably use later on. Let's take the limit of x to infinity for um, x, a plus x minus 4x squared. over 6 plus x squared plus 7 x to 4. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little trick here. Um, I'm going to take this out. What we're going to do is going to take a factor of x squared out of both the top and bottom. It's the same as dividing by x x squared, but I'll do it in a slightly more, uh, more shallow way. So if we put x squared here, what times by x squared gives us 8? Well, obviously it's just be 8 over x squared. The next term will then be plus 1 over x, and the other term will just be 4. And we'll do it for also for the bottom side, so we put x squared. Now, of course, when we put our x squared, um, because we're going to be times it by something that's square rooting, our x squared then becomes x to the power of 4 when it's within the square root. So, um, make a big square root. So this will be 6 over x to the 4, because it's inside the square root. Our next term will be 1 over x squared. And our final term will just be plus 7. And that's great. So these two can cancel out. Same but from top and bottom. And now I'm going to introduce you one little thing which I didn't tell you before. I said here that the limit of 1 over x tends to 0 as long as x tends to a plus or minus infinity. One thing I should add is that in this case we're having terms like 1 over x squared and 1 over x to the 4. Now, what we can deduce from this is that. 1 over x to the power of 4 becomes, tends to 0 a lot faster than 1 over x. Same thing for 1 over x squared. Therefore, if we, we, I think we should adapt our definition slightly. We should say something on the lines of 1 over x to the n, uh, as long as n is greater than or equal to 1, then we can say that the, uh, that the limit of it limit of x to plus or minus infinity, well that will of course just equal to zero, because any as long as n is bigger than one, we know that it's going to get to zero a lot faster than than one over x, and therefore will definitely will definitely tend to zero, will definitely be a limit to zero. So if we just add that there. Now if we just apply it to our to our little problem. That means that this term will tend to zero, so we can cancel it. This term will tend to zero, this one will, and this one will. So if we cancel all those out, we are left with minus 4 over the square root of 7. Uh,
space suit, that is our answer. So we can say that the limit of this function as x tends to infinity is just equal to minus 4 over root 7. And that is our last example. Okay, so the next topic I'm going to introduce is asymptotes. So there's many different types of asymptotes. Uh, first one's vertical, got hor vertical, horizontal, and oblique. So vertical, of course, just being straight up. This typically happens when you have a fraction and the denominator becomes equal to zero, or tends to zero. Um, so then f of x then becomes really great and tends to infinity. So in vertical asymptotes, f of x tends to infinity. And in horizontal asymptotes, x tends to infinity, it tends to happen when you have something like 1 over x, or uh, those are the most common examples, something over x, some kind of 1 over some kind of polynomial. So the next type is oblique. Uh, this happens when your curve tends to a linear equation, a kind of line, first order line. Um, so this happens, when this happens, your x will tend to infinity and your f of x will also tend to infinity. Uh, so you have something about now asymptotes tend to be defined as a line that a curve will kind of approach or sort of tend to. So before we had those one over x examples, our our curves sort of curve down, and with a kind of a the line in that case would be a horizontal line, and our curve approached that line. Uh, so now let's take an example. We tend to, particularly with asymptotes, we tend to take a lot of limits. Limits are really, really helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go through an example. Now, for the example we're going to go through, it's going to be like this. x squared uh, minus 3x over 2x minus 2. Now, we want to try and find out all the different asymptotes with this, with this function. Let's call this f over x. Now... So, first way we're going to do it is we're going to first look for the uh, vertical asymptotes. So, we said that they tend to happen in this case, will happen when our denominator turns into zero. So, if we just take quite simply 2x minus 2, we'd say when will it equal to zero? Well, of course, that will also be x will equal to 1, because then when one, x is equal to 1, 2 times by 1 will make 2, and you'll have 2 minus 2, and that will make zero. So our first asymptote will be at x is equal to 1, and that will be a vertical asymptote. Now in other words, when f of x tends to infinity. So you can say that when x is equal to 1, when x tends to 1, and f of x will tend to infinity. Um, that one was quite simple. Now let's take... Now let's try and look for our horizontal and oblique asymptote. So for this we're going to have to make x tend to infinity. So take the limit of f of x as x tends to infinity. So if we take our x, x squared minus 3x over 2x minus 2. So we're going to do that trick that I showed you before where you uh, take out a factor of x squared. So, take out x squared, make that 1, make that 3 over x, make that x squared, make that 2 over x, minus 2 over x squared. Now these two terms just cancel out, and using our definition that we described here, where the limit of 1 over x to the n, where n is greater than 1, uh, where x tends to n infinity, our limit will be equal to 0. Then essentially we becomes insignificant, we don't need to worry about it anymore. So in this case we're going to take away our 3 over x, we're going to take over our 2 over x, we're going to take over our 2 over x squared. So what are we left with? We're left with 1 so that sounds like that we get 0, 1 over that would be 1 over 0 which of course means that this tends to infinity it's a bit strange now you think, why well, we made a limit and we get infinity well, <laughs> that's probably because because uh, 
we know that it's not going to be a horizontal asymptote because we tested for x to infinity and we got, um, we were supposed to get, if it's going to be horizontal, we were supposed to get a constant value. In this case, you know, 0, 1, any kind of constant number. But when we tested it, when we tend, made our x tend to infinity, we got our amplifier function to tend to infinity. Therefore, that means that as x tends to infinity, our f of x is tending to infinity. What that means is that when we make our limit, what we're not getting a constant. Instead, we're getting some kind of another function, essentially. Another, in this case, a linear function, because we're going to deal with simple examples for now. So, if I redo the limit, The reason why that happened was because when I was doing my limit, uh, I negated too many terms a bit too quickly. So this time I'm going to do it a bit, a bit differently. So we start off with 1 x squared minus 3x over 2x minus 2. Now this time, I'm going to factor out first a factor of x. I'm going to see what happens after we factor out factor of x. And sort of simplify it a little bit at a time. Um, so we factor that out, we get x minus 3 over x 2 minus 2 uh, over x. And does that look right? 3x squared, and uh, that turns like that, like that, that turns like that, like that. Great. Um, right now, we can say that these two cancel out. And using our definition that we said before, we can easily just cancel out this 2 over x because we know that it's just going to tend to 0 and be insignificant. So we take this out, <laughs> we'll make this equal to two, oops, sorry, x minus 3 over, we're only left with 2 here because this term got deleted. Therefore, we can say that are as x tends to infinity, our function now can be kind of approximated by, or will tend to, x minus 3 over 2, to a, a straight line. And so that's our second asymptote. So basically our two asymptotes are, as x tends to infinity, f of x tends to this function, and our the one that we found originally is x tends to, I think it was 1, uh, our f of x tends to infinity. Now I'm going to show you what they look like on a graph, uh, so we can see if we're, if we're right or not. So we have an asymptote at 1, and we also have another asymptote at uh, f of x is equal to x so that's a gradient of x going through 3 of x over 2, so it's a shallow gradient uh, at minus 3 over 2. So about here, you can say something like that. And um, I forgot to mention actually, these also apply for positive and negative infinities. They don't just apply to positive, because when we solve them, all the assumptions that we made apply to both positive and negatives. So we can say that both positive and negative will so go this way and also go this way. And uh, our graph ends up looking something like this. And we can see the negative side, which looks something like See that there are two asymptotes, this one being at 1, and this line here intersects at minus 3 over 2. Uh, those are the limits, and I think that's about it. That's our asymptotes lesson. Hope you liked it.